All right. Hey guys, it's Mark here at Needle Jig. Uh, this morning or is it afternoon? I'm not sure really, but uh, today we're talking to Renee Little. Uh, she's been tattooing quite a while. She's got a nice shop out in Oklahoma City. Uh, young female artist. Well, maybe not so young, but you know, hey, yeah, she still looks good, right? So anyways, uh, here's Renee. How you doing this morning, Kit? Good morning. I'm doing good, Mark. Thank you. Thanks All for right. having me. Always good to see you. You look lovely. The hair is fabulous. Oh, I thank you. Thank you. <laughs> the only thing I can do during the pandemic. <laughs> Yeah, we're all we're we're all in our pandemic garb. We don't shave. We don't. Yeah, do anything, you know. my armpit hair is getting outrageous. Oh, same, same. Yeah, <laughs> just let it be free is what I say. <laughs> but I mean, it is kind of a nice. Uh, we usually see each other quite formal, you know. So this is kind of nice and comfy. Yeah, and our on our know. best game day uh, hungover. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> No, I think you're the one of the people that see me first thing uh, before a convention. And then you see me the next day and see like the before and the after. It's Just the amazing. slow deterioration. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's, that's convention life for all of us though. So, uh, you know, very few of us are uh, bright eyed and bushy tailed on Sunday mornings walking onto the floor. But uh, yeah. so anyways, uh, how's life there in Oklahoma? I mean, how's the shop going. I know it's constantly under uh, refinement and expansion, but uh, give us a little bit about that. Uh, the shop is doing really well. Um, I'm really thankful for that because it's been a really crazy two years or almost two years. Um, this next July will be two years. Uh, the pandemic hit, of course, when I was going to start phase two of my build out and you know, kind of get a, a t-shirts and start selling merchandise. And so that had to be a little delayed, but um, I still have artists. Um, there's more artists that are coming. So I'm building out more booths for them now. Um, and it's actually doing pretty great besides the ice on the ground right now. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. You took a good tumble this morning. You said, so I, yeah, I did. I definitely did. I have, I'm sure I'll see uh, past the black and gray tattoos, all the black and gray later. <laughs> um, but, uh, no, it's, it's been pretty, pretty nice. Um, here, uh, in Oklahoma, I'm basically a weirdo, uh, like I, I appointment only, um, I just tattoo and paint and kind of work. So when pandemic hit, it was perfect timing for that. I mean, that's kind of every artist's dream though. So congratulations to you. Uh, I Thank jumped you. the gun just a little bit here with the whole shop expansion here. Uh, I, I, I've known you for years and years and I, I just wasn't thinking, but uh, uh, there may be a lot of people tuning in out there that may not know you at all. So uh, can you give a little brief introduction about yourself, how long you've been tattooing, where you got your start, just some basic information so people aren't totally in the dark. Okay, uh, hello. <laughs> my name is Renee Little. <laughs> it's my real name. Um, I've been tattooing since 2006 um, in the southeast of uh, part of the US in Tampa Bay, Florida. And um, I moved to Oklahoma City um, pretty much, I think, I think like five years ago now um, and uh, with the intention to kind of spread my uh, set some roots down and build a studio of kind of my creation. Um, I really love tattooing in Florida. There's a hell of a lot of killer artists out there, but it was becoming really oversaturated and um, I knew that I could just do something a little bit bigger and grandiose and an environment that um, is still developing its tattoo culture. Um, so this is kind of like the frontier lands out here. So here I am after world traveling and tattoo conventioning. And that's how me and Mark know each other. Um, it's through all the tattoo convention of the Villain Arts crew uh, through Troy Temple and um, um, travel the world because of that, that tattoo team that we were on, you know? Um, but uh, here, I just wanted to like really put in a really strong rooted building that I can not only use my, for my studio space, um, cause I've been painting longer than I've been tattooing. Um, but here I can actually like um, have people that are very like-minded as well come to me and we can work together. So 
that's what I've been doing. And that's where I am now, basically. I think I covered it. <laughs> okay. And why did you pick OKC? I mean, uh, just out of curiosity, did you have any extended family there, friends there, you like the weather? I mean, um, cornfields, what is it? <laughs> um, there's not as many cornfields as you think. <laughs> that's, uh, uh, I learned a lot about Oklahoma City since I've been here. Uh, if you see Oklahoma in a movie, it's actually Kansas really funny. Um, so I had no family here. Uh, one friend or two is a couple of uh, Kyle and Amanda Peterson uh, from the tattoo convention that we or tattoo conventions that we do together. Um, they worked at a shop here and they knew I was ready to move. Um, and my options were Philly or Portland. And um, Philly just seemed, I really love Philly. Um, I do consider that a second home. Like that's, I have so many friends there and I have so many clients in that tri-state area um, that I knew I would be fine, but it seemed still to be a dirtier version of my hometown, if that makes any sense. Bigger, an older version. <laughs> an older, yeah, more set in like grittier version of St. Petersburg, Florida. You know, it, I don't know why, but St. Petersburgans, as we call ourselves, love to go to Philly. <laughs> and I hear bad things happen in Philadelphia. I do too. That's wild. <laughs> Bad things happen on St. Pete too. Um, and same thing with Portland. It was so, um, I know I love that town, but it started moving into a different, it started changing, of course, when the tech companies moved in and it just became this crazy oversaturated, like everyone would be a tattooer and everyone had this fantasy about it that, and I was just like, no, man, I'm just, uh, I just want to be my clients. I just want to be able to paint and do my thing. And it, I don't know, it just seemed like somewhere where I couldn't really move forward. I would just be putting my body in a new state doing the same rat race. So I saw so many options and so much potential in Oklahoma City. And because one, I was so busy here. Um, as soon as I got here, I think I had a clientele. Um, and now my books have closed. It's, I mean, I, I for the unforeseeable, unforeseeable future, um, and they're all big pieces. Like I can really like do what I want to do here. So I kind of sacrificed, you know, being able to um, have family close by or friends close by for sure, just to be able to kind of take the next step forward with my own self and business and art and everything. So yeah, Oklahoma. <laughs> <laughs> now does your shop, is, is your shop like full custom appointment only, or is there any sort of a street shop vibe at all going on? Do you, do, do you take walk-ins at all? Do you have artists there for that? Um, no, we are in the heart of downtown and we're in an arts district. So there's lots of museums. There's lots of like really beautiful botanical gardens. There's but, and there's also law offices and I mean, huge like Corinthian column towers, you know, um, of the judicial buildings and the police buildings. So um, we're completely surrounded by um, kind of like a more corporate um, kind of clientele, but um, not, we don't even have time to do walk-ins, which is, I mean, I, I keep hiring people and then they get booked up and hire people and then they get booked up. So We've been appointment only since the very beginning and it's just worked out really, really well. Um, I do offer um, something I learned from Amy Shandick in Texas. Um, I do something of a consultation day um, with the pandemic. We have of course limited it and there we have a lot more rules now, but it's like one day where everyone can come in and talk to us in person if they want to. So it's kind of a free for all that day, but no, no walk-ins. <laughs> Uh, very yeah, much no, art studio. Yeah, <laughs> I I find that uh, that whole consultation uh, consultation day thing uh, very intriguing. I know it works incredibly well for Amy and 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 her mm -hmm. crew down there, and I know another uh, a lot of people have adopted that same mm -hmm. thing. And 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 whereas I I see it and I know it works, I just don't get the gist of it because when I was tattooing every day. Mm -hmm. I couldn't foresee something like that actually working. And, mm -hmm. but I, I know it does because uh, I, and I also know other artists that literally just have nine to five 
hours and i never thought mm -hmm. that would have worked but it works in certain areas for certain people man and it's just mm -hmm. it's uh just goes to show how creative and innovative uh we can be as a group to make our desires and our passions work i mean it's just it's, oh totally it's it's it's, oh, it's, it's always because it I mean, on the surface, a lot of things are like, there's no way in hell that would work, but people are doing it ridiculously successful. People are doing, and that's, if I could give any advice during all of this, it's, um, I've learned an incredible amount of just owning a business and communicating with not only my clients, but my coworkers and their clients, it, you would be really surprised of how well people will react um, and how well people will work with you when you set the rules, when you just tell them what it is, not meanly, not rudely, you just plan it down, you have a system, people will follow it. You know, like I started thinking about, well, if I drive into Starbucks, right? I know that I have to say grande, I can't say medium, you know, or they're gonna whip my hand. But I know this, so I follow the rules, you know, like I know how to order my drink because it's the rule following and that's how they get the system working. So I refuse to conform to Starbucks <laughs> rules. It's just, when it's I feel just, sassy, yeah, I'm like, I'll have a small. <laughs> I just want a large black coffee. End of story. That's it. <laughs> yeah, go, I'm going to pipe in. There's a couple people in the chat room. We've got uh, Mukesh says hello. Uh, Jerry Shackles is asking where his needle is. Uh, and Ryan Mistassina says hello. It's me again, the guy from Maryland. Uh, hello, Renee. Oh, hello. How's it going? <laughs> hello, everyone. Thanks hey, for guys. Watching. Thanks for joining. I don't know. I, I, I don't know if something's missing. Please call customer service and I'll get on it right away. If I'm Ooh, personally responsible, uh, call me. <laughs> no, I think, yeah, I don't know if they, uh, I think they're looking for some needles or something, but uh, uh, Leland Walker also says great news and uh, I'll be back in the background. All right, cool. cool. Anyways, cool, cool, cool. Uh, no, you're, you're, you're correct. Um, especially I see it daily that like, people have to learn to adapt in this time. And, mm -hmm. and as humans, we resist any change uh, at all, but it's nice to see that when change is indeed a necessity mm -hmm. that we're capable. I mean, that, that we're that, capable. That, it's, it's, it's not only capable, but we're, we're willing to, uh, on most levels, at least most logical human beings are, are, are willing to reassess the situation, adapt to the new surroundings and move forward because that's what mm -hmm. we all want to do. We just want to keep moving forward. So well, there's, a, there's a small segment of our population that wants to go backwards, but you know, Hey, mm -hmm. you're, you're always going to have that. Um, the rest of us, we want to keep moving. And, and that's, mm -hmm. that's what it is. You know, we want our art to get better. We want our business to get better. We want our family, our relationships, everything to get better and move forward. So mm -hmm. we're going to do whatever it takes. Uh, I like to think we're going to do whatever it takes to make that happen. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And um, I always wonder when, you know, I, I'm so heavily influenced by the people that I've put myself around over the last, you know, 15 years, Mark, in February. Uh, I can't even been, remember my 15 year mark, so shut up. <laughs> okay, old man. I'm just saying, this is the longest thing that I've ever done. So, I mean, besides painting and loving my cat, uh, this is it. Yep, cool, commitment. <laughs> um, but uh, I'm so, like, I allow myself to be so heavily influenced that I'm always so surprised when I hear, you know, the stubbornness or, you know, the older gen, like putting their heels in the dirt and saying no, no to growth, no to anything. I'm over it. Um, when they have seen and experienced so much and they're right, they're right beside me traveling and doing all these things and hearing, but I still see it as like a new industry every day. This is the new, and like, it's, it's a young industry. So therefore we can bend it and wield it to our own. And I always describe that too. It's like, well, there's tattooing and then there's the industry of tattooing. You know, and it all started out with a dude or chick selling machines or selling inks to everyone. And then that grew. So we can all have our hand in it. Um, and when we come together, that's when how really cool ideas happen for sure. 
Um, but the consultation day, I mean, especially with the pandemic, I can't imagine being a shop owner and just having people like coming in and out, in and out, in and out, you know, that would terrify me and for um, my staff. That yeah. I mean, me. I, I, I've been studying and, and paying attention to, you know, uh, disease control, you know, bloodborne, airborne pathogens and all that for, you know, close mm -hmm. to 30 years now. So I have a pretty good idea on cross-contamination and how things go and whatever. Mm -hmm. And I don't have major anxiety over the current, you know, uh, world as it is. I just use common sense because I have mm -hmm. practical experience in how to keep myself safe and my family safe and my workers safe. Uh, mm -hmm. Do I know everything? I certainly do not. But mm -hmm. I have more knowledge than most of the general public. So that, that, that's, right. that's really, really, really helpful. And I just wish more people would listen. But people mm -hmm. are reluctant. There's those that do want to drag their feet into the future and go a little kicking and screaming. But those very same people that are reluctant to budge on one level, they've adapted everywhere else in their life. Okay, none of them, none of them still walk from state to state or get in a horse and buggy. Okay, they use their automobiles and they use their, the, 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 the aviation and, and do these other things. So they have the ability to enjoy technology but they're just, you know, anywhere they think they have a little stronghold, they're, they're going to try and dig in and, and, and be reluctant. Mm -hmm. I, I, yeah. I find it entertaining at times, you know, like, because mm -hmm. it's, I, I love coil tattoo machines. Oh, I yeah. I prefer rotary tattoo machines at this oh, yeah. point in time. And I can't wait for the next innovation, you know, and I'm constantly trying mm -hmm. to think of one myself. So, you know, shh. but, you know, but I mean, like, really, though, it's like, it doesn't mean I'm going to give up on coils or I'm going to give up on rotaries or I'm going to mm -hmm. give up on anything. I just, I want to see what's coming next. I, I enjoy mm -hmm. that. I, that, that uh, yeah. I get excited. Yeah. It's what, it's what drives me, you know, is mm -hmm. to, you know, what's the next step. I don't love the surprises, but you know, it's, it's, it's something that's going to make our lives easier, our careers easier, give us longevity. Uh, before we went live here, I was talking about, you know, my more recent hand pain and, and most likely, you know, having arthritis of the hands and the, that kind of fun aging thing. And, uh, and, and anything that is a development in our craft um, mm -hmm. is going to be beneficial most likely. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you said industry earlier, and I've generally referred to that as, as an industry. Um, last week we were talking and uh, a guy H and got on and he used the term community. And I was like, mm -hmm. wow, that's that, that kind of struck a nerve and, and it made a lot of sense. And I've been thinking about that a little bit for the last week. And I'm like, mm -hmm. well, I still think we're an industry, but I think we're a community driven industry if that makes yes. any sense i mean and yes. it's just a definition it doesn't mean anything it's a label but oh. that's you know i'm constantly trying to figure out my place within this business in this industry this community or whatever and and the best way to convey my feelings about it and i think that's mm -hmm. my most recent terminology is we are a community driven industry no i love that because it is true we're very much um we're clicky within ourselves and I hate even saying clicky, but um, no, it, it is very much like we are very, um, we're socially influencing each other all the time. And that's the community aspect of it. And I know that, you know, like any name big art, like any name, any artist that's big can go out and influence other tattooers to either buy a product from the industry. So, I mean, and that's how we work. You're not going to have, like anyone else outside of our industry convince us, you know, mm -hmm. to buy things. Uh, we only trust other tattooers. Um, and I, I am still a truest. Um, you know, I still have every single coil machine I've ever bought. I will never sell them. Um, and, and I can still build them. Um, and I think it's very important that people still understand the, the mechanics of it, how it works why um why we have springs and why we have you know like so they can understand what they're actually doing upon impact of the skin where you know the only downside is grabbing a rotary first thing it's, it's a little harder for me anyways to you know kind of if i were just to jump into that pool it would be hard for me to understand like how it's actually hitting the skin 
So yeah. when I, yeah, yeah. So I, I, I do have that where I am very, um, I love like the old mythology, even I call it that too. So we're going to throw in all the descriptions, uh, the, the mythos of the community of our industry <laughs> is very powerful and um, kind of romanticized and, you know, true to the coil and um, needles on bars and, you know, hand pressing stencils and, um, you know, drawing instead of the iPad, you know, all of those things have a great deal of importance because we are tradesmen or craftspeople. Um, I think it's important to know, you know, where, um, where it all stems from. So in case, yeah, if, an EMF wave just takes us all out. We can still work too. Like, yeah, we're I mean, still pirates, right? <laughs> I mean, a, a, a tattoo machine is just a tool that drives the mm -hmm. needles into the skin repeatedly. The needles are, you know, the 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 transportation tool for the pigment. The the pigment is mm -hmm. then in a carrier, which is is called an ink, and 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 and, and but I mean it all breaks down to very, very simple mechanical means. Mm -hmm. And yeah, everybody should have an understanding of why these things work, but having different tools in your toolbox uh, to, to, to implement the end result is, is, is what's important. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. it's just more options. I mean, you know, I don't know anybody that has a toolbox with just one screwdriver in it, you know, or one wrench. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's, there's, there's a variety of tools for different jobs. And I've made so many needles over the years, ridiculous variations, you know, um, but each one had a specific purpose and some, right have longevity and they're going to be used for eternity probably. Mm -hmm. And some were just a flash in the pan and uh, mm -hmm. didn't pan out, I guess, as I, I should say, but you know, it's like, it, it doesn't hurt to try new things. I love new things, try them, understand them, utilize them in the future. If they suit their needs and drop them if they don't. And everybody's, mm -hmm. everybody's needs are different. You know, uh, different hand speed, different uh, uh, machine speed, uh, your style of art, uh, everything mm -hmm. is a variable, you know, so, so yeah. if you don't look at these tools and understand the pros and cons of each, you, you don't know what tools to choose. That's I see of... it as like a giant algebraic equation, every <laughs> single tattoo. Um, and I, I, you know, I failed math in college. I don't know how I... <laughs> but I'll build it's the you a spreadsheet, idea. Renee. Right, right. Um, <laughs> but it's, I know that's scary. I'm like, I can run a business, but I'm like, what is this fractions? Um, uh, so you have your client, that's X, and then you have their skin type. Then you have like what style you're doing. You have what pigment you're using. You have all these things. And that's, yeah, if you don't think, put every single one into it. That's that's the fun part for me. <laughs> and uh, is thinking about how can I, tactfully approach this tattoo and you know actually implement this design and put it into this person's skin magically you know and that is the fun part for like and that's that's the part that I actually like why I kind of got I do I do dork out with needles with you Mark because if you look at my drawer like I'll go over with a, one of the young apprentices here at the shop and they're like, why do you have so many needles? I'm like, oh, okay. And then I just like, it's story time. Like, all right, let's go through it. This one for this and this one's for this and this one's for this. And sometimes I go like this um, and they think I'm crazy, but the end product is what's most important. And um, I just now solidified myself finally into just two styles, just two and that's it. So you're digging um, your heels so in is what you're telling me. I am, but at least I cannot buy all the range of needles and I can just <laughs> concentrate on two styles. Um, and yeah, I mean, I've, you know, I had to close down uh, from taking new clients on just, but, and I've hired other people now, so it's great. But uh, it is that math equation, uh, every single client that I have. Um, and I know we want to talk about some color saturation too, and that's kind of part of it is what is that math equation? How do I pick my needles? And um, also uh, just taking care of your client too. That's a huge part of um, that whole equation is like, how does your client, how is your client physically when they walk in the door? 
is really, really important. Um, and I feel like that's also something that's finally being addressed in our community industry society. Um, yep. I don't, I don't know if you knew this, Mark, but I did massage therapy before tattooing. Oh, if um, I knew that, I'd be hitting you up at the shows. Too. I know. I know. <laughs> a couple of people have actually, there was a couple of shows that were really dead and, uh, I just put a sign out and I made sure there wasn't, you know, there's usually like a massage therapist at the shows. And so I made sure she wasn't there. Um, but I put a sign out that said unprofessional massages for 50 bucks only the tattooers <laughs> um, not touching the general public <laughs> not touching the general public yeah <laughs> and i did three tattoos <laughs> or i did three massages and that was like oh well it made some money sick <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, before uh, you get into the next part we've got a couple more comments and whatnot uh gene says in which parts of the country are you working from mr mark l uh, I am based out of Western Massachusetts. Uh, I started needle jig actually in Arizona in the very tail end of the nineties, but uh, uh, my family and my wife's family are from Massachusetts. So we brought our kids back here in 2007 and uh, yeah, this is, this is where we're based at. We uh, had a store in California for a little while and uh, that was a, a tough market to try and break into out there and uh we eventually had to close that for a couple different reasons but uh mainly to focus on the core business but anyways i'm in the northeast uh that's where i'm at i under normal circumstances you can catch me all around the country at different shows but i'm thinking it's going to be at least six eight months or so before that starts again yeah. Yes. Okay. And then uh, let's see. Jeremiah Carney is just another tattoo artist out of Toledo, Ohio. I love you guys and all of these chats. And then he says, uh, one of the things I love most about this industry is just that the innovation and growth that I've witnessed firsthand over the past 15 or 20 years, along with amazing, uh, amazingly creative and innovative people. I'll embrace those changes and you'll just keep uh, moving forward with the rest of us. Uh, it's awesome. Mm -hmm. And uh, thank you so much for your, your, your kind comments, sir. Yeah. yeah, now is definitely the time, especially with the pandemic. I, I hate to sound like an opportunist, but uh, I mean, everything is changing right now. We need bright minds to be strong and brave and go for it. You know, um, I'm right now trying to patent something, good Lord. Um, but this is the opportunity, so why not, you know? Um, I, I I'm not a big believer in patents. Uh, I, 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 uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I've been there. Oh. I've done that. Um, I, I, again, it's, it's mixed emotions and just my opinion, but uh, anything you want to patent one, it's, it's, it's slightly expensive to patent something, but the big problem is, is it is stupid expensive to try and defend a patent later. Uh, and mm -hmm. if you don't have the resources to go down that road and if it's really successful, you most likely will need to, uh, that's, that's a touch and go on. Uh, I find it mm -hmm. to be more important just to be kind of the first on the spot, the innovator, the first to market, things like that. And um, mm -hmm. that, that's how I see it. Uh, something would need to be making me a lot of extra zeros in order for me mm -hmm. to, to head down that path. And I, I've got a few resources more than others, but we could talk about that later. Uh, that's just, I want, just, yeah, I'll talk to you later about uh, it. So when, 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 when the general public's not involved, I, we can talk. But um, anyways, uh, uh, yeah, I think about it. Like this is a strange time earlier in the year. A lot of us didn't know if we were still going to be in business. I mean, really, a lot of us are like, what the hell's happening? Am I you know, am I going to be in a, living in a box next month? And um, a lot of people panicked. Uh, and there's some out there that took that time to think differently, restructure. I know I've been more productive within my business than I have been in years because I had the time at home and not on the road. Um, I'm sure you could agree. Your shop would not be getting the renovations that it is if you were still traveling like you were, right? No. I mean, so, I mean, no. you, you take this opportunity to capitalize on the unfortunate situation 
Mm -hmm. but it's better than sitting there and feeling sorry for yourself. So yeah, absolutely. Um, the first day that we had to shut down or that we had an inkling that would be shutting down. Um, I got, actually, I started a new LLC, um, um, because I knew like, okay, we're going to be shut down for a month and a half. Um, and I didn't want my workers to also strain themselves. So I took it upon myself and I just, I started a small print company and survived like, um, and you know, of course, when I started this business is when the, uh, the, our government shut down. So of course, like my banking and everything was still getting, I wasn't approved for anything. I think I got no unemployment. I got no, you know, uh, nothing. So, uh, I was really glad that I had the tenacity and yeah, i I know that if I lay down and just like, oh, I'm going to relax, that's when I get depressed anyway. So I just didn't stop. Um, and I, I watched a lot of my friends, you know, I got kind of jealous, so because a lot of my friends were able to like, you know, update their websites and really fine tune their portfolio and like do all these things. But um, I was just, no, I just didn't stop. I actually got my the fire under my butt even more. Um, and yeah, I mean, basically everyone thinks I live here because I'm just always here, either building or printing or drawing or something, you know, and I'm glad that I have it. Um, but yeah, it's, this is not the time for sure to sit and relax at all. This is the time of the opposite. Like we all need to kind of get our, get our mojo going, get our ideas out there, as, you know, as fast as we can. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm a boring kind of guy. I get about a 20, 20, 25 minute commute each way every day. And uh, I listen to CNBC, you know, business radio, see what's going on in the market and around the world and mm -hmm. stuff like yeah. that. And um, uh, some of, I can't remember the specific numbers, but the amount, the number of small businesses, uh, entrepreneurial mm -hmm. small businesses that have been started during this is, is ridiculous. It's awesome. Ridiculous. I mean, uh, yeah. Um, it just goes to show when you take a human and you put them on a spot, you know, they're, they're, they're going to get creative. And I, I love mm -hmm. that aspect of it. I, I, I obviously uh, have great sympathy uh, and empathy towards anybody who's, you know, been caused a lot of pain and, and, and is out of work. There are certain trades that are, that yeah. are, you know, dire. I you mean, can't do uh, anything. The yeah. yeah. The restaurant businesses and servers and, and, and bars. And these are a lot of our friends, you know, and yeah. a lot of our clients for sure. Uh, those people that have the expendable income and, uh, and, and I feel for these people deeply. Uh, but there's other aspects that are just thriving and it's, mm -hmm. it's, 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 it's mind boggling to me. I, I, I because I'm a numbers guy. I like to look at statistics. Theoretically, we should all be just sitting on our stoop and, and pouting, but no, there's people out no. there just going and getting. It's awesome. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what evolution really truly is, is like when- Oh, that's science. Faced... That's fake. I went to school for <laughs> biology. <laughs> uh, yeah. And that's my curse too, is you know, uh, everything. Um, uh, I was, I was studying to be a biologist and hopefully die in Antarctica with some respect, you know, studying algae growth. Um, but that is evolution. And so when we are faced with an environmental dilemma, we have to conform or we'll die. <laughs> um, and I think about that, even with the, like, the old timers that really stick their heels in the ground, they must be just comfortable. Like if I were comfortable, I'm sure that, I would not, yeah, I'm sure I would be like, no, 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 why change anything? I'm comfortable. Uh, the world has always dealt me and thousands, millions others, like not the most comfortable hand. So no. it keeps me evolving. Um, and I, yeah, I think that's, that's part of the, that's another, like the Z variable in the algebra equation mm -hmm. is how comfortable do you want to be? Um, yeah. But no, I think it's, I think that's, it's very sad and I hopefully too that hopefully that's how our system works is that when people are, are not able to work you know people in, like us in this situation are able to think innovatively keep going yeah. and, keep and help our those economy economy a lot. yeah exactly 
Yeah, no, I, uh, I, I, uh, you know, I, I've been dealt a lot of shitty hands throughout my life too. I've dealt, been dealt mm-hmm. some amazing hands for sure. Um, I, I'm hands. quite grateful, absolutely grateful. But the, it, it's like one thing I've generally always sort of said is, is the the absolute last thing I want to be is content. I do not yeah. want to be content because do not want to be content. You no, know, I mean it's like I'll never, I'll probably never retire. I won't stop working because mm-hmm. I'm. I've forever been of the belief that the day I stop working is the day I start to die. And I, 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 I I will semi-retire at some point probably and work selectively on my passions, but I won't ever stop. I just, but I don't ever want to be content. I need that. I need that nudge every morning, you know, the, to, yeah, I need the chaos. Yeah. Well, chaos. I need a problem to solve. That's what I am. I'm a problem Mm -hmm. solver. So as long as there's something for me to try and fix, my mind is busy. My mind is happy. So. Mm-hmm. Oh, exactly. My father is, um, he's, yeah, he's retiring right now, or he's trying to with the pandemic. And he's worked every single day in his life since he was like 17, you know. Uh, and I don't know, now he's like sitting at home. and I'm so scared. <laughs> that He's like, that I got him one of those Oculus Rift things. So at least he can get up and like sword fight or something. I don't know. <laughs> um, and he'll love it. Yeah, it's on the way. But that's that's so true. Like I imagine, I can't imagine my father just sitting around. He's so uh, active, and you know, he, uh, he's the one who taught me, you know, basic like um, mechanic engineering. You know, he's the one who taught me like how to build, like do my woodworking that I do. Um, you know, that's how that's where my craftiness comes from. And I I, I hope it. If I'm at that age, I'm in a barn somewhere, freaking making furniture, you know, uh, learning astrology, uh, like, I don't know, just keep myself going. Uh, because even tattooing and, you know, our businesses are our passion, but mm-hmm. it's not us, you know, it's not completely us. No, it's, it's a huge just, part, but it's not it's all of us. Part, I mean, but... I love cars. I love hot rods. I love to build things, oh, uh, fabricate things. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I've always said, you know, the, the one thing I'm going to do if I ever retire is that's when I'm going to go back to school. Sounds ridiculous. Mm-hmm. I'll be near the end of my life, but I want to go back to school because I always love to learn, you know. Um, oh, yeah, same. Lapidary, uh, 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 lost wax casting, stuff like this. I have so many Ooh, other little yeah. things that I've, roads I've always wanted to get down. So mm. even if I stop Ooh, working, I've had so many roads I still have yet to travel. So exactly, that's just me, exactly. Yeah. Well, and that's good that you at least recognize that because so many people identify themselves just with what they do every day. Um, and as a lot of people, I think I've heard the most, you know, for me, a lot of people just think I tattoo, I love my cat and I paint, you know? Um, but I'm like, no, I went to school for biology and entomology and, uh, you know, I love, I love doing epoxy resin. I love making jewelry. I love woodworking, you know, like once, once a year I go to Harry Potter convention and sell magic wands, you know, I make a killing. Uh, (laughs) There's more to Renee little than just a pretty (laughs) face in cool tattoos. (laughs) <laughs> yeah right <laughs> well some of them hopefully some of them are cool <laughs> um but, so t- tell me about this printing like what is this this new business in this printing oh shit okay so it's there's so bigger. many things to uh, talk about i know i know and i do art night okay so that too um so i started off just real small pr- format in my apartment you know like desperately trying to print out these things. And I even had to go, there was like one commercial printer that I had. And this is where it was such chaos trying to get these things printed during the pandemic that I was like, that's it. I'm just buying a, a large format printer myself. So um, we're starting small. Basically I did all, I don't know if you saw all the bird prints that I was selling there. They sold like hotcakes. Uh, and I just kept like every day, like bird painting, bird painting, bird painting. And I would make prints of those and sell them. And um, I, I don't know where it'll take us. We're really small now, but I've gotten everyone on board uh, on my staff. So we're now all going to be making prints. And so I'm working on the, the store right now. Um, Additional so source of revenue at, is never a bad thing. You know, I mean, never it, a bad it's thing. It's just, just, yeah, something to fall yeah, back on when shit goes mm-hmm. wrong. Exactly. Because there is one downside to appointment only. And I'm, I'm seeing right now probably like a 30% drop. So if I can, you know, if cancellations, like say if, if anyone's spouse gets exposed or they get exposed or anything, we have really, really 
great clients that thankfully candidly tell us uh, if they've been exposed or not. So we just cancel them, reschedule them. So this will hopefully completely buffer out and take over, you know, that loss. Um, and yeah, I'm very excited about it, but I'm learning. I'm learning every single day. I'm actually like, I need to call Troy and ask him like, what paper source do you have? <laughs> Cause it's just He'll tell you. Yeah, yeah, he did. He did like, Last time he was in town real quick, he was in the back of a car screaming it to me. And I was like, what? Uh, so yeah, we're going to have that talk again. But He's a good man. Um, and he has so much knowledge on so many different topics. I mean, oh, uh, yeah. it's, 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 I, I do not get enough time to sit one-on-one -on -one with that guy. I mean, you never, nobody ever does really. But uh, the, I, I, I did get to, to spend one night at the compound with him. Uh, during this pandemic thing, very socially distant on the roof, you know, just, just, just hung up there and we burned through a bottle of scotch and talked for hours and hours and hours. And it mm -hmm. was, uh, I cherish that time. I mean, that guy is, yeah, I, he's a, he's a deep individual. So I, he's I a very, um, he's very inviting too. I remember, um, I was very intimidated um, from tattooers in general, um, not not of an unknown reason, just because of, you know, where I started in Florida, you know, uh, basically as a young girl, you know, you were told to shut up and put your head down, you know, uh, keep it down, work, shut up. No one wants to get tattooed by a girl. So, I mean, God bless that my name is Renee, to be honest. Um, they would call on the phone. They're like, yes, Renee will do your tattoo. They thought it was a dude. So, um, you know, I was very much intimidated the fact that I didn't want to have that dumb conversation with anyone. So I just didn't talk to people for years. Uh, I just stayed quiet and I listened. And so that's how I first met Troy was uh, in, he was friends with my boss and came to visit at, uh, the Asbury Park show, you know, that John John puts on. And um I think I was like overhearing their conversation. I was like brushing my teeth or something in the room. And I just like kind of popped my head out and commented on it. And Troy, I guess, was like, you're my friend from mm -hmm. there on. And, and he was the only person in that time that I had ever spoken to where we actually had a real conversation about business, about ethics, about situations. And he was the only person that ever gave me that respect in that time. So after that, you know, I, I'm really fortunate that I was able to get, you know, close with him and be friends with him because he's, I think I've learned the most from him for sure. He's a knowledgeable um, guy. And for those that don't know who we're talking about, we're talking about Troy mm -hmm. Temple, who's got to be the largest uh, uh, tattoo promoter in the world, I would say. I mean, that, that yeah. might be... I don't think that's exaggerating at all, for sure. Anyway, no, I don't think uh, so. Villain arts shows, uh, great guy, very talented, and uh, mm -hmm. I have a lot in common with him. I mean, we talk about business, mm -hmm. we talk about the stock market, we uh, we both have uh, rental properties and 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 do subsidized housing and and other things like that. So I mean, uh, it's contracting mm -hmm. and so many things that. He you know, I, if I get stumped, painting. I can call him up. Yeah. And if he doesn't know the answer, he will refer me to somebody that can help too. Mm -hmm. it's a, he doesn't claim to know it all, but he's he, he's just got a wealth of knowledge. If you look at his portfolio, you know, um, he's also like kind of, he is that innovator. And I guess like that's maybe where I got that mindset. I saw how he was successful and I'm like, well, I know how to do things. All these old timers have been telling me I'm stupid and why do I want to go to college and, you know, all the like just tattoo. That's all you should be doing, you know, and I, I did. I like gave up painting. I gave up all the stuff, you know, just to be able to concentrate on tattooing. But when I met him, um, he makes his own shirts. He makes his own prints. He makes his own books. He makes his own, you know, he employs so many people that are his friends um, and that for me, that was like, that is an option. Why can't I do that? That's mm -hmm. awesome. You know? So yeah, uh, it's pretty incredible what he's put out and he's a survival, he's a survivaler. He'll survive. Survival. Um, there's a new one. So la, 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 la. yeah, exactly. <laughs> I was like, ah, just go with it. Yeah. Go with well, it. Well, in addition <laughs> to being a very successful businessman, not just in tattooing, but in all of, all of his ventures, he's also a good fucking human. Oh, I swore yeah. again. 
So, but oh. as he is, he's a good human. He's a, you he's know, a he's, he's just good people. I, I, I'm proud to call him my friend. Um, mm -hmm. So this this printing thing is is taking off. It's a, it's a little extra income and times of need. That's awesome. Uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Tell us about this art night. How how is that progressing, especially during this time? You know, uh, right before the pandemic, it was awesome. You know, we would have like uh, it was still small and intimate, but we would have like up to like nine tattooers, painters, craft people um, come to the studio uh, once a month and be able to just paint, draw. Um, I'm really, really well versed and schooled in most fine art mediums. Um, so watercolor, oil, acrylic, um, uh, uh, gouache, uh, liquid acrylics, you know, like anything I can tell you how to, what what makes things something gallery, what, what doesn't, the history behind it. So I just have this little brain full of nerd stuff. Art nerd. And, art nerd. Uh, so I wanted to be able to, I saw that there was no community here, flat out. Uh, tattooers don't talk to each other. Um, it's really weird, especially when I came on board. They were like, who is this girl? Oh, we got to, we got to destroy her. <laughs> um, so I just ignored them and I created my own thing. Um, and it was really great. We had, you know, I had people making jewelry, making knitting, uh, people that tattooers came that never painted before. And then I taught them how to oil paint. And then now they're doing amazing tattoo work, you know, and they like, they never thought that they could learn realism, but then they're knocking out of the park after doing oil painting, you know? Um, so people are like catching on and realizing that um, painting and art do actually help your tattooing. So um, it's, it's getting back, thankfully, because we did shut down, of course. Um, I did some like live tutorials, um, but I really couldn't figure out how to get all of us safely together. So um, when it was small, when we started up doing it again, uh, I could easily put people in my studio and socially distance one another, no problem. But then I did notice like communication was getting really hard um because we like to joke around and we're just screaming at each other so uh, spread those airborne pathogens really far really far yeah <laughs> so now uh the zoom meetings are great um even if we're in the same building we can like have our little like arm thing and we can hear each other and so we can actually see what each other are doing a lot easier. And it's a really great way just to communicate and be a little bit more quiet and a little bit more concentrated and kind of just joke around without actually having to look up and like leave your painting. Um, and I really, really love it. So we're still, we're doing that. Um, and it's been working out really great. Um, so I do it twice a month, every uh, first and last Monday of the month. And uh, yeah, anybody is welcome that wants to paint, draw, ask questions about if they are in the middle of a painting. That's really where it, you get the most benefit. If you're stuck in a painting, you don't know what to do. You don't know how to make something look the way you want it to. You're not, you're having problems with the medium. Um, that's what the night is for is to, I, I don't get to utilize that kind of conversation in tattooing. So. Uh, well, and, and your, your personality is you have a very mothering personality. You want to uh, take care <laughs> of and embrace it and, and help others. And I, I can see this working really well for you and we'll be sure oh, to put yeah, your contact it's information in the description below. Cause this thing will be, you know, playing perpetually on uh, mm -hmm. YouTube for an eternity or until I get bored looking at it and delete it. No, <laughs> but uh, we'll, we'll get all the contact information down there. So anybody that's watching that wants to participate can get a hold of you, uh, you know, all of your social media, things like that. Oh, great. So, great, yeah, great, great. Yeah. But yeah, you are, you are kind of uh, uh, the mothering type. Uh, we know that from the convention circuit for sure. Yeah. You know, Do you, you remember my nickname? <laughs> <laughs> no nope. um, uh, i don't it, it it was pretty bad and then it was uh, one apprentice who should, should, it was should we mama, not share that no it was it was mama nene uh, oh, nene. Well, that's awesome. yeah yeah but um Wait. it changed it changed because of an apprentice that thankfully was like wait you're not that old <laughs> and i'm like you're, you're more like an auntie nene <laughs> Anti and so he was like, he was, yeah. And then he just made it out to be like, no, I'm destroying this. No one's calling you mama Nene anymore. Cause they, 
I was getting a little bit of a complex from it, I think. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, just like, is anyone okay? Anyone want juice boxes? Mm. Everyone? Okay. Uh, You're vying for Kate's title here. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. But yeah, no, um, it's very fulfilling just to be able to do that. If I wasn't tattooing, I probably would. I, I mean, I should have been a social worker like the rest of my family. Um, or a nurse or um, a teacher. Like my mother was a teacher. Um, every single woman in my family is doing some care for good. Mm -hmm. uh, the truly thing that I was really most upset about with the pandemic is that um, I'm usually one that goes crazy with the mission center here, the homeless shelters here, doing benefits, things like that. And there's like no way. Um, there's no way to handle that traffic with what we have right now. And um, that's yeah I have a very giant space uh and I can't do I can't facilitate that kind of you know energy and that like we did 5,000 tattoos and raised this much money you know like damn it that's what I'm good at and I can't you might get back it to it right one now. of these days for sure oh we you will know, I'll oh, do whatever will. I can to help you with any ventures you have like oh, that you know thank that you. so but oh, thank uh you, thank you. yeah no I I uh I could never do I I have friends that are in that 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 those careers yeah I, I could never do anything to do with like you know like nursing or or, or social work or things like that I, I would just be chronically depressed I I just I oh, it would destroy well, me I don't I, I yeah. don't have it in me you know if I can't there, uh, I just can't no there <laughs> there is something to that um and actually do you know Robbie you know Robbie Ripple Oh, fuck well, yeah. Don't you? Yeah, stop swearing, yeah. Mark. Stop swearing. God damn it. No, oh, no I love Robbie. I was, yeah, not too far yeah. from him when he had his, uh, his accident mm. there. Yeah, that was, that was, we were uh, all there. We were we were all there. To I, I watched no shows. Him. I watched none of the stage shows at ever, mm -mm. ever, ever. Nope. Just oh, Robbie's be, going on. Yeah. I just and happened to be and, right there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yep. watched it with my own eyes. Yeah. Oh, I love you, Robbie. Uh, mm -hmm. and he's a guy you can't break. I mean, it's you can't break him. maybe physically, but not spiritually. It's just physically it, you can. Yeah. yeah amazing. Um, individual, but yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry. I interrupted. Um, Go on about Robbie. No, no, it's okay. Talk about well, Robbie. him and I have gone back and forth with this idea too, because he does a lot of motivational speaking, um, out against depression and anxiety and things like that. And, um, caregivers that's part of it he's very caring he very much cares and has very a lot of empathy on him and that wears on him and it, I, I would lie and say if it doesn't wear on me too and it sounds crazy but I've done a lot of spirit like a lot of spiritual healing myself in the last five years or so um, because tattooing you know I, I don't know if, as someone like me I happen to be a girl yes um, I happen to be a little younger looking. So uh, looking. The, the immediate <laughs> looking, thank you. Uh, well, the immediate reaction I get from people that in our industry that are coming from a very harsh reality and meeting me, you know, it's, it's a, it's a feel, it's a very real and obvious, you know, emotion that I'm hit with a lot. Um, and then with clients as well, they're in trauma, they're feeling pain, they're feeling all these things. Um, and I do everything in my power to make sure that they're comfortable. And that's what I was uh, talking about before is making sure like noticing their discomfort before they do. Um, and so it takes a lot of energy to notice all those things, to notice where if their joints are hyperextending, I'm going to adjust them a little bit, you know, but I need them to sit for eight hours. <laughs> so um, I have to put forth that energy. I have to put forth that care. But yes, it weighs on you. So me and Robbie have talked about uh, a lot about how we can displace ourselves. And I've gone, I mean, I've gone as far as like hiring a shaman to work with me on this empathy shit. Cause you know, you're tattooing all day and you're fine and you're fine. And all of a sudden, you know, you're the only one in the shop and you just wanna, you're, you're overwhelmed and you don't know why, you know? Um, and so I, I have learned over years and years and years of how to separate myself from that a little bit. I can still do my job. I can still see it as my practice. Like as soon as I walk in my door, I know this, these are my criteria in which I have to meet. I, I do care, but I can't give my, I can't allow it to affect me anymore, you know, um, because there are, um, 
there are a lot of people that are feeling these things, but haven't identified it yet as what it is. They just know they feel anxiety. They feel depression. They feel all of these immense um, energies um, and they don't know where it's coming from, but it is, it's coming from working and touching people all day. Um, normal people don't have to do that. You know, yeah, no, and, and while you were just talking, I was sitting there thinking back to like, yeah, I mean, it, it's true. Tattooers are essentially sort of, you know, uncredited social workers, therapists, bartenders, mm-hmm. you know, like we, we do absorb an awful lot from our clients, you know, throughout the process yeah. and everything. And while you were just talking and you talk about how you dealt with it spiritually, this and the other thing, and I think, I think you just discovered why every tattooer needs to go to the bar after work every night. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. When I had to we shut, need to shut close down, <laughs> yeah, you know, it's like, uh, I, I, that makes a lot of sense now and I'm making half a joke, but actually, you know, partial reality here too is, is when I had to shop in Arizona, we would go out, you know, six nights a week, you know, hit the bars Mm -hmm. every night. And we would say, Oh yeah, you know, we're going out, we're being social, we're marketing, we're doing this, we're that. And and yes, we're just enjoying ourselves and our youth, but at the same time, you know, we we probably were dumping a lot of that emotional burden at the same time, you know, and it was like, Mm -hmm. I wasn't mature enough then to understand that. And I probably am still not mature enough until you just brought it to my attention. Now I kind of get it. (laughs) Thanks, Mama Renee. (laughs) You're welcome. Well, if you think about it, like, I don't know, I talk about sacrifice and what it takes to do this job all the time with the young apprentice, because they don't get it. Like, the sacrifices of normal relationships sometimes go out the window, oh, you know, um, all we, all we do is think about these next projects and drawing and facilitating and ordering like every day that I have off. I think there's maybe five hours within a week where I think of, oh, I go get my hair done or I could sleep or maybe I should eat better, you know, like, Uh, so when you're done with the day, you're having all these feelings. And then you think about like how you don't even get to properly eat or go to the bathroom or drink water, you know, that's, that's painful to realize. Uh, and so, yeah, I used to bury it too, pretty hard. I mean, that was the Florida life, you know, go team Florida, fucking wrecking our livers. (laughs) Um, I had to get out of there. Um, and the same thing too with Philly. It's like, I knew I would probably chew me up and spit me out because it's the same mentality of you have to be a little tougher there. You have to be a little quiet. You have to listen. You have to, you know, and at that cycle, I just couldn't, I couldn't do that cycle. A lot of people like manage that amazingly and they're such badasses. They're so stoic and amazing. But or they just about, hide it well. Yeah. Are they crying inside? Yeah. <laughs> because I, I a mean, lot of them are really. Mm-hmm. You know that, right? So, oh, I know that. Oh, I know that. Yeah, this is word to the public. If you ever see a really scary tattooer, you're just frightened of them. Give them a hug. COVID oh. hug. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people broke. Um, <laughs> yeah, right. Well, that's that was kind of like my. That's always been my approach, Mark. You know, um, of surviving with these gentlemen is that I can always be just really honest and kind of pick up on how people are feeling you know like I can do it with my clients I do it with people you know I wouldn't say I'm chameleon but I can always kind of just interpret what emotion at least they're having at the moment so I always had these co-workers like even tattooing it you know and on the other side there's me I'm usually clueless as to how people around me feel which is amazing. That's a talent. <laughs> At least you can shut it up and focus. I have to like, I have to put the headphones on right now because I can feel everybody and it's driving me crazy. Um, but no, even with like, I don't know, I, I look at me from the outside perspective and go, how the hell did an apostolic Christian girl make it into Philadelphia Eddie's and do well? you know um and it was always because i just really loved the people that i was around and i knew that they knew more things than me and that was always really exciting i remember like it was really early in my career and i met don juan at eddie's you know works for troy and i loved don so much and i he was talking about she gay and i was like i just kind of went like she gay and he was like what (laughs) 
are you crazy? And I was like, I am crazy. My people didn't teach me, teach me. He was like, okay, come over here. I'm like, thank you. I'm sorry. I'm an idiot. And because of him, then I, oh my gosh, that whole world exploded. And then I ended up working for people that knew more about that, you know? And so, uh, I kind of like let myself just not have an ego. I, I, I know nothing, please teach me. And I still carry that on, especially when I'm having an emotional breakdown for some reason, I have to ask myself why. <laughs> I, um, I attribute a lot of my own success to pure ignorance, I wanna say. Um, not, not so much ignorance, but like uh, not being aware of uh, the rules because I, I came up in a state where it was illegal. So I didn't have, mm -hmm those the experiences around the shop so i didn't even know on any of these unwritten rules so not knowing the rules i wasn't aware that i was breaking the rules i wasn't aware oh, yeah, you know so i used to just walk up to these famous artists and just walk up to them like hey i'm a human you're a human and i want to talk to you so that's got to be acceptable and um and i did that a lot in the, the early part mm -hmm. of my career especially when i first started traveling and because of my ignorance, knowing that I probably wasn't supposed to be approaching these people, uh, allowed me to approach them. And they, in turn, embraced me somehow, some way. A lot of these, a lot of these big names, famous people just, just mm -hmm. I don't know, maybe they felt sorry for me like a lost puppy or something. They just sort of adopted me and pet me, rubbed my belly and, and fed me knowledge. And it was like, uh, it, was, it, was, it was amazing, but it was the same sort of, Thing you're touching on even when i first went to arizona i used to take and arizona was pretty sort of like you know secretive still in the tattooing days in the 90s and and mm -hmm. and i used to go out on my day off my shop is closed i would go out and visit other shops and just walk mm -hmm. in and be like hey i'm mark hey. i'm a tattooer yeah and 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 and, and <laughs> introduce myself to people and i had a few doors shut in my face for sure but uh mm -hmm. but for the most part people were receptive and that that all blossomed into some absolutely amazing friendships that i still have to this day uh mm -hmm. out in arizona but like yeah i'm successful due to my ignorance you know or arrogance i don't know which one it is but uh it's yeah. a vibe you're you're throwing out there you know you just 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 being open and just letting people feed you knowledge. Right. And enjoy people. Um, I never really quite understand where if someone is like, oh, that's so and so, uh, you know. I'm like, what, you got a crush on them? Do you want me to be like, you know, you want me to be a, a team man here? Um, but it's that blissful, uh, I'm excited to meet people. I'm excited to, you know, learn from people. Um, the feedback that I get from that is like, no way have you been tattooing for 15 years? No way have you been doing this? Cause I still smile. Yeah. And, uh, and for those who don't know, uh, tattooing has changed dramatically since then. And uh, yeah, you didn't smile a whole lot as a girl in the industry. Um, uh, and there's lots of reasons for that. Um, but- uh, Well, if you smile at somebody, you obviously want to be with them, right? I mean, that's- Obviously. Ob oh, she's being friendly. I mean, <laughs> you know, uh, obviously she puts out, she's being friendly. Yeah. Um, but it, you know, I, and that was a hard reality too. Cause I thought I was just like, I was so tomboyish most of my life. And I was such a nerd most of my life that I was never, ever seen to be attractive at, at all remotely. So when- uh, any kind of catcalling started or any kind of like, hey, you're a girl, why are you here? I go, I, I don't know. Why are you here? You know, I was, I was actually confused. I didn't understand. What do you mean we're not equal? <laughs> yeah, I like, I didn't understand chauvinism. I guess. Um, my men in my family, like, it's not like that. So uh, like my dad would be like, hey, I'm building on the back. Come and help. You know, I'm like, okay. Uh, we were never like, you're a girl, so you could do this. You're a boy, so you do this. It was never discussed, you know. Uh, I'm from a family of power women and power men. It was always very, like, equal. So the first time I did a show in South Florida, um, a man came up to me. Uh, the same show, let's say three days in the same show. A man came up to me and said, what are you doing here? And I'm like, what are you doing here? They're like, you're a girl. What are you doing here? I'm like, are you going to pay my bills? 
Uh, and then I'm like, I'm not here to resolve your mommy issues. That's for sure. Um, it was always very confusing. So I think that's what helped me. Um, I never really had anger about it. I just had more like, that guy's an idiot. Uh, so sorry for that guy who's going to die in the past, you know. Uh, and I was able to joke about it. I was able to just kind of laugh it off. Like, okay, weirdo. Like, I, don't, I never quite understood it. Um, Having the ability to laugh off weird men in this industry is definitely going to get definitely. you <laughs> Oh, God, you have to be able to laugh it off. If you're offended by everything, you won't make it. You know, you have That's to just... have thick skin being a, a man or a woman. Anybody that wants to get into this business, if you come in here... And, and if you can't take some razzing and, and, and you're going to get all sensitive, just, just go somewhere else to start, man. Yeah. It's just, just not going to work. Yeah. And some of it's fun. You know, I love going back and forth with you. I love like, it's like giving shit, you know, and yeah. I'm from the East. That's what we do. We give each other shit and that's, that shows love and companionship, you mm -hmm. know? And I mean, and then there's the weirdos that we were like, uh-huh. You know, I broke a guy's hand once. That was fun, you know, but he grabbed my pussy. Is that cursing? Uh, he grabbed my pussy from behind at the stencil line. At the, the, I think it was Baltimore. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And then soap got him. Which I was, was going to say, I, I, I'm yeah. sure that didn't end well for him at all. So No, no. I mean, I broke his hand because I was doing jujitsu full time at that time. That guy was an idiot. He like put his hand... This is so stupid. He put his hand between my legs around the side, right? So then I just had to clamp down and break his hand. <laughs> so like, you're an idiot. Um, and then, well, so, obviously he was showing yeah. his intelligence to start with. So, you know, he deserves right. what he gets. He if you're watching, good for you. <laughs> yeah, good for you, dude. <laughs> but no, I mean... And that, that kind of thing, um, I always kid with the, I don't kid uh, with the apprentices here and also my female workers, like we're going to take jujitsu together because you're going to need it. Um, you know, if we're small, you know, things happen, people get drunk, they don't realize you weigh a hundred pounds and all of a sudden you have a concussion. Remember that one? Do you remember my concussion? Nope. <laughs> uh, was yeah. it my concussion? Because I don't remember. I, I, <laughs> I remember. No, no. It was, uh, I got my concussion the same day that Marshall Bennett hit his head as well. Oh, so Everyone hit their head. something going head. around. I guess so. Yeah, yeah. It was the same. It was, we were bleeding together. It was a thing. Um, <laughs> but yeah, like the conventions used to be wild. I don't understand how uh, that was never made into a reality TV show itself. You know, like that would have been way crazier than any of the other ones uh, you none know, of us that would be able been... to afford the insurance premiums if that was filmed <laughs> no or i mean yeah lives would have been i don't know destroyed or it would have just been more honest i think of our industry and how we deal with one another our society our community you know i um, haven't been in a fight at a show in a few years now i'm doing good yeah same same <laughs> You know, leave that for the young kids. Yeah, yeah I got, I got yeah. people for that now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but no, it's pretty crazy how everything has changed. Um, and I'm really excited for it. Um, I'm really happy for it. It's just been exhausting. Um, and I speak with other, other ladies, lady tatters as well. And, you know, it's just one of those things. It's like, God damn it. Why does this even have to be a thing? thing you know like aren't we just going to work and doing our best job you know um uh, the violence I'm really glad is dying down um because I yeah I I'm no patience for it whatsoever like uh, I mean there's a big difference between okay when you get people that have known each other for years there will still be some of the sort of sexist ball busting but, oh yeah but I also still perceive you as my equal. We're just mm -hmm. having, you know, fun banter, stuff like this. So to anybody who's outside our, you know, relationship was walk by while I was busting your balls, might think oh, me God. be like, you know, like, like, like some sort of a sexist pig, but like, I would never do that with somebody that I didn't know or feel comfortable no. with. And, and, and and, right. and now you give it just as good as you get it too, though. So, but I mean, that's just mm -hmm. all part of the fun. It's no different than busting on, you know, a, a 
somebody in your family, a, a brother, or exactly. Sister, a, a, That's a, a camaraderie. A good friend. You know? Yeah, it's 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 just mm-hmm. you know it, it's just fun. But uh, but people need to understand that that is in no way honestly acceptable in our world. You know, I mean, if if somebody was to come up and say something to one of these young women they will get their hands busted if not worse for sure you know it's okay for you to insult your sister but nobody else can insult your sister so you know just mm-hmm. just 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 keep that in mind well and, and yeah and it's it takes a a little bit of brutality as just to be able to give it back right when it happens as it happens you have to act you can't just like oh he said a mean thing to me you know because right. that yep. that never works you know shut it down um, shut it down. And, uh, people have asked me like, how do I do that? Like, how am I so quick with it? Um, frankly, it's like my grandfather was a Romanian, you know, immigrant and he was hard. (laughs) Um, so I know how to shut down very nicely with respect. Um, because of course he had his, he, yeah, he would have his moments of what he thought a woman should be like. Um, and then would get confused when he'd see his granddaughters, you know, dyeing their hair and getting piercings and tattoos. And, uh, you know, that I always had to be very creative to um, show him that I wasn't being disrespectful to him, that I love him, but he needs to quit. Uh, and also my mother is probably the scariest woman in the world. So these men were easy, you know, like anyone that kind of comes up to, even in my, like, where I am in my building now. Um, I'm right downtown and we do have a homeless population because it's a downtown. And so it's kind of like an art form, you know, I can talk to schizophrenics. I can talk to angry, uh, great people. I can talk to drug heads, like anyone. And I can subdue and neutralize the conversation. Um, you realize and, you've learned all those skills within the tattoo world, right? Oh, uh-huh. absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> like my father always said, like, I don't know what it is you're doing because he hears, I tell my dad everything, 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 Mark, Uh-oh. this man, this, this poor man, <laughs> I, hey dad, just like haphazardly too. Just like, oh yeah, so I did this today, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, what the fuck? Sorry for Chris. Uh, um, I feel but he always, Yeah. <laughs> um, but he always said, he was like, I don't know what the Lord is training you for, but it must be to be like coach a little, a little league team or something. Cause this is just so intense. Like just managing, you know, um, that many people that are so free to do whatever they want to do, you know, that are good. It's, it's an interesting community that we have for sure. It challenges you. You have to be independent, but yet also a team player. Um, you have to be on your A game to be even in our community, you know? Um, At least the inner circle, the upper echelon. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. You know, when you're sitting, uh, you know, when you're sitting at the table, you know, you can't be joking around um, because our time is so short, you know, our business is fast moving um, you know, opportunities are all around us. If you don't make them, you know, we don't have, you know, retirement, like a lot of people do every day. We are planning for our retirement every day. We are trying to like, you know, somehow pull all these strings that are around us. It's very intimidating. Um, sometimes just to think how many opportunities are actually around you, and which ones to utilize and which ones don't. You know, and that that teaches you, I think, a lot about people and how to interact with people of all kinds, which is you're way ahead of you're way ahead of the group here because you're having these thoughts where a lot of young tattooers literally are thinking, oh, yeah, I'm going to tattoo today and I'm going to spend that money at the bar later. or I'm going to, you know, whatever. (laughs) I've been there. I've done that early in my career for sure. I mean, Mm -hmm. it's it's, it's how we think. Uh, But you obviously have, you know real learning behind you uh earlier you know you're talking about you know you you wanted to start a little print project and you started an llc Mm -hmm. you are in like maybe five percent you know you are you are very few people think that way they're just going to start making selling i mean they're not going to 
they're not going to consider the, the, the professionalism, the business aspects, whatever. I have a number of LLCs, different, every, every property mm-hmm. owns in a different LLC. Yeah. Um, you, you just yeah. have to, because if you want to be successful, you have to start protecting the things that you are building and right. acquiring from the mm-hmm. beginning, because if not, we're in a society where somebody out there is looking to take them away from you. You know, and that's, yeah, exactly. it's unfortunate, but I mean, mm-hmm. you have to think that way right out of the gate. So, I mean, you are, you are levels above almost anybody else out there tattooing because you've surrounded yourself with the right people, you know, or the right, people right. and, you know, you can speed dial somebody and get a question answered. It's, yeah. The people I trust, the people I, and I do, I seek out like the people that are, that know what they're doing, of course, aren't assholes or to a point. You know, they got to be a little bit of an asshole that I love them. Uh, but we all are. Of course. <laughs> yeah. Um, someone that I can reach out to because that that's what a friendship is to me as well. Like they know that they can always reach out to me at any second, all hours of the day. You know, I'll make them a grilled cheese uh, and also, you know, give them business advice. You know, you should be um, closer. And- I want grilled cheese. Okay. Come on. Come on, Oklahoma. Come on down. Um, mm-hmm. I'm but, not a Midwest guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm South Midwest. I'm not sure what we are still. Um, but no, that's what that's what a good working friendship is. You know, I think even like when like you brought me on to the needle jig team, you know, it was almost like, wait, do I sponsor you? I remember that conversation. I'm like, no, I don't think so. He was like, oh, well, okay. <laughs> Like, no, Mark, we've just been friends. <laughs> like, uh, to me, and- that's what it's all about, though. The, the, the whole, this whole sponsor business arrangement, uh, bullshit, yeah. whatever, I, it has nothing to do with that. To me, sponsorship is, is, is really just rewarding good customers, friends, um, mm-hmm. you know, people that I, I, trying to make life a little easier for the people that I care about. That's what it's about for me. If I have a little Thanks. more and I can share a little more, I'm willing to do so with those I love. I mean, mm-hmm. that's just, that's, that's what it's about. This whole business arrangement part that, that bothers me. Uh, I have to be more that way nowadays because some people mm-hmm. just want to get on the boat and offer nothing in return. But yeah, no, it's, 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 I, there's plenty well, of people working. to take care of that I have that are not known in the world. So, you yeah, know, it's just, it, it doesn't have to be about that. So, well, you break up the cycle of like a, mon- a monopoly too, of like who the peak artists are, you're giving artists a chance of exposure, you know? So I, you know, if you think about what currency is, right, our money, our money is just something that we give someone for uh, work later on, you know, it's like a credit, like I'll, you can either pay someone to do the work that I could do, or here, here's some money. Right. So a sponsorship is we're trading. We don't, there is no currency involvement. We're trading either like you help me with exposure, discounts, like things like that. And I could do the same. Like I can expose you. I can show how I'm using them. I could show, you know, so that's a trade. And I feel like that's where a lot of people get confused. It's like, yes, you have to be good at what you do, but also that hard work ethic of trying to figure out, um, like the next thing to help your people is the hardest part. Like for me, video is, oh my God. <laughs> like but, but even uh, without, but even without that currency, for me, it's all based on our initial friendship. Like, here's the thing. Mm-hmm. I'm going to help you regardless as to whether you mm-hmm. have the ability to help me because, because it doesn't necessarily, okay. it doesn't need to be that way. It doesn't need to be a hundred. There is no one hundred percent equally balanced. Uh, no. it, it's, it's never going to be that way. If I have no. more, I can do more, you know, and, and I've had many people that in the past that have been, you know, friends and mentors and whatnot, who have been in a far better position in life that have helped me mm-hmm. in areas where I needed it when I needed it. And that's just mm-hmm. kind of part of it. Uh, I don't want to be uber wealthy, successful and, 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 later on in life and be alone i want to have Mm -hmm. these friendships these companions and and these other people i want i'm not going to hand somebody for for you know for nothing and and even for my own children to be honest with you i don't want to give my kids so much that they don't have to do anything for themselves uh uh, 
But if I had the ability to help somebody get them to the next level or, 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 or just answer some questions or anything, I will always do that as, as long as it's somebody that I know, love and respect, you know, it's just, right. they, they're deserving the of that, that information. Right. Yeah, I just, love the fact that you can do that too. I'm trying to find my own little path in that right now. And it's so hard. Um, I'm right now I'm giving people jobs. Yeah. I'm giving, I'm like, you need a job. <laughs> yeah. It's in your nature. You, 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 you're going to do this. You're going to motivate people. You're going to help people. It's just, it's who you are. I didn't even realize that was kind of who I was until mm -hmm. I found myself in a position where I could help people. And it's kind of selfish because in helping people, it makes me feel good. You know, there is that little like, you know, uh, endorphin, dopamine, whatever, something's getting released and, 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 and making me tingly or whatever, you know, and, and it feels good to help people. And I enjoy that. So, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, I, so I do it because I want to, but I also do it because it does make me feel good. You know, is that selfish? Right. I don't know. I don't care. No, you know, if no, everybody's I mean, winning, who cares? Doing. Yeah, exactly. Like we have to lighten ourselves every morning. And if we're just doing our job, if we're just doing this, like, then what is that? But if we're affecting other people's lives around us, then that is, I think that's honestly the overall goal. Like, uh, I remember, you know, I was remember hearing these fellows talking about uh, success, you know, and kind of throwing each other's faces like, oh, yeah, well, I got this and this and this and oh, I got this and this and this. And I would always like come up in the middle and be like, well, it's just your version of success. Mm -hmm. uh, everyone has their own different version of what that is, you know, and I remember, I mean, like a lot of people would like to try to be like, oh, well, you don't have this and you don't have this. I'm like, yes, but I. Um, my version of success is, you know, uh, yes, making people happy, making, allowing people to survive. You know, I was 16 once and I had to figure out how to survive. You know, I would sell art uh, out of people's storefronts because they would let me, you know. Um, so that was just a simple, oh, yes, let me help you make money so you can live and eat. Mm -hmm. And that was so beneficial to me at that time and so giving and just, I, I don't know where I would be today if I didn't have that little bit of help. So I see if, yeah, that's, if we're all just trying to be humanity and uh, live and prosper, then that's, that's what we need to do for people and see where we can, uh, see where we can without exhausting ourselves help. Um, and right. I mean, you can't give more it. than you have. I mean, that's just yeah. that simple. Yeah. And a lot of us have tried to do that. And a lot of us, you know, uh, over the years, crash and burn. A, a lot of us over the years have tried to help people that uh, I, I don't want to say are undeserving because everybody truly needs some help and deserves some help at some point. Mm -hmm. But there are always those that you want to help or that need the help and you're trying to help them and they're not ready to accept the help or they're not willing to make the changes and, and stuff like that. So you, you have to realize at some point that you have to stop. You have to draw the line and, and not that they're not deserving, but they're not accepting of that. So, right. you know, you, you put your energies towards... Uh, you know, in, in a direction where it's better utilized, I guess, is the best way mm -hmm. to, to look at it. So, yeah. Yeah, I've been, um, uh, that's another like really big piece of advice um, that I've learned a lot, just owning a shop. Like I had really strong boundaries beforehand, but now I'm learning even more about what my boundaries truly are. Um, because before, like no one looked at me, you know, needing something, like no one ever needed anything from me. Um, and now, and, but I would be there to help anyways. Um, so now that I'm actually like this needed and requested person, at least every couple hours or so by someone in my studio, you know, I had to place like really, really strong boundaries um, just so I, and I explained that to them, like, I'm not cutting you off, but this is my boundaries to make sure that I mentally can stay sane for you guys. You know, I knew exactly where I was. I know exactly how much I can take a day. You know, and they've all seen it. They're like, oh, I'm peaked. Nope, nope, I'm done, <laughs> you know. Um, and, and that is so important that people do, um, you know, uh, even when I'm helping someone, I say, okay, you can have this job for this long. We'll see how it goes and we'll review and then we'll go from there. So at least I know if they're not going to do, if they're not going to take my help, at least there's a cutoff point where I can set them free, you know. Um, and those little things seemed to work, seemed to help because in the very beginning, yeah, I just wanted to help, 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 help. 
I was exhausting myself, you know, I wasn't getting anywhere in my own career. Um, and I was, you know, I wasn't good to anyone. I wasn't good to myself or anyone, you know, they always say, uh, you know, when you're flying, you know, to put the oxygen mask over your mouth first before your child neighbor, because if you pass out, you're useless. Yep. Um, and that was a, that was a huge learning curve for me when I started this business. Um, because everyone, it was me. I, yeah, I was the foreman. I was the, I, I was everything, you know? So, uh, just make sure I didn't snap, you know, boundaries are very a lot important. of people don't understand how hard it is to run a tattoo shop. I can tell you this, I run a, a much bigger company now than my tattoo shop. Uh, mm -hmm. But this is essentially easier work than when I had my shop. I even tell people, I, I don't even tell people I sold my tattoo shop. I tell people I sold my adult daycare facility uh, because <laughs> I mean, it, it is, you know, especially if, you know, I mean, people are like, oh, artists and uh, artist owners and non-artist owners and stuff like this. And uh, in order to be an artist that owns a shop, and to try and maintain any level of art on your own while still doing the business aspects, still being a, a friend, a leader, and, uh, and, a, and, a, and a peer to the other artists in there, uh, that is probably the most exhausting thing I've ever done in my life. And, yeah. and I don't ever care to do it again. If I ever even considered opening another shop again, it would have to be a big enough place where it had full management right from day one because yeah, Oof, I, yeah I don't want to do that again it's yeah. it's, it's it's exhausting you know because we're all alpha males you can't have you know and alpha females mm -hmm. excuse me but like yeah. but like you can't have that many dominant personalities in a place and expect things to go smoothly it's going to be a rocky mm -hmm. road and you have to know that going in and you have to deal with it accordingly. It's just, yeah, you have to know of all of the different elements that you could possibly get yourself into, which there was two instances when I first opened the studio that totally took me off guard. That was, that was a huge life lesson and it reset my way of thinking for the rest of this. And so far it's been really awesome. Um, and it's about hiring people. It's about vetting. It's about, you know, all these things that I saw, what didn't work, what did work. Um, because it is, it's a lot, it's people's personalities, it's people's, like you have to motivate them in a way that is positive, um, as much as you can, you know, we're about to come into winter, everyone's seasonal depression is about to kick in. So I bring in more plants. I bring in little UV lights that they don't even know it, but they're getting vitamin D. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> Um, there's all these little things and it, I do it for my clients. Why not for my coworkers? You know, like I make, but you sure have to do it for it. yourself too. That's, that's right. the, that's the key, you know, that's it's like, key. you know, taking care of yourself yeah. before you can take care of others, which is the point you just touched on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. awesome. Um, and yeah, um, you have to make sure you at least sleep. And, um, sometimes I don't do that one very well. Um, I'm classically known not to sleep. I can run off of two hours and be fine. Um, and that's honestly how I get everything done, you it's know, only because you're um, still so young. Oh yes. I'm still so <laughs> young. <laughs> Thanks Mark. <laughs> um, but I wish I had some better advice about how to manage all of that because I think I'm doing pretty well. I haven't entirely freaked out yet. I haven't, you know, thrown in the towel, um, but it is like, there's a lot of different factors that people don't think about, um, especially just making sure that the businesses ran right on the books, you know, can be really trying to communicating with a CPA bookkeeper, you know, getting the communication down pat, I think is the hardest part um, because there's so many different kinds of communication that are going at you at the same time. Um, and as far as like running the business, I'm pretty, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, I'm really simplistic. Um, you know, uh, I listened to Jess Ferris um, TED Talk and I, it was like almost my exact same model, you know, um, of how he runs his business. And I was like, oh, thank God, because he's a very successful shop owner. And um, basically, uh, I know as my, like, I, there were things that I shedded from myself, like it's very Taoist. Uh, I release things into the universe that I don't need. So the things I do need that do feed me, I can easily bring in. 
you know, um, and I'm very much like that. I try not to have things rule my emotions. I try to just be simple about things. I try to look at like the clear sight of what's going on. Um, and also just think ahead, you know, thinking ahead will just save so much stress. So you're not bombarded so much every day, you know, um, but no coffee, uh, getting on a, a interesting sleep cycle. These are things that will help you run your business. Speaking um, of speaking of which I could do this for hours and hours and hours, with hours. You, but I do have some limitations. One being a little bit of time. I've got some other things I need to do Two. This giant Yeti's out of coffee, which also cold, means my yeah. bladder is entirely full. So I know I we go for a little bit longer here, but I, I I think we do need to end this at some point because I, I'm sure nobody could still be listening to us ramble. But I do want to do this again. I do want to continue this conversation because I, mm. I I think we have such a similar mindset and uh, and, and at some point I know there's a small percentage of tattooers out there that would like this knowledge and maybe utilize this knowledge and, and, and we if they can even just take little slivers of, of things we have to offer and, and mm -hmm. apply those to their daily lives uh, might get them to the next level a little bit quicker. I mean, it's just, mm -hmm. uh, these are the things I love. I love these inspirational conversations and I love talking to you. I, I could do this, like I said, for hours and hours and hours. I think my voice is already like, you know, like feeling a little sluggish here. It uh, sounds raspy. Morning. Yeah. Mine nice. normally is anyways, after any conversation, but uh, that's just this early in the morning. Mine is, you can hear it too. It's yeah, struggling. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It's like, uh, okay. I don't All know right, me... why that is, whether it's just from, well, maybe I just talk too damn much. I don't know. And, and my voice is my vocal cords, whatever larynx is, is worn out already at, at this point young age that i'm at but uh you're the young age yeah, yeah. you just need to do some stretches do some warm-ups you know warm -ups? <laughs> that'll be fine oh god yes uh, no I've, I, I've gotten some recommendations from that and i may have to work on that if i'm going to continue these sort of uh, podcast slash interview slash whatever the hell it is we're doing here um mm -hmm. but yeah no I, I i i thank you for your time i really really do uh, appreciate it. I, I, I love talking to you. I wish I get to see you a little more frequently, but uh, we no. need to do this again. Absolutely. Uh, we might have great. to make this some sort of a, I don't want to say regular thing, because then people start to anticipate things and get disappointed when they don't get them, you know, on schedule. But uh, I, I want to do this again. Absolutely. And, uh, and uh, yeah, just uh, maybe we make this some sort of an irregular sequence or something. You'd be cool with that or what? Yeah, yeah that'd be cool. I always if, have if, if people are interested. So. I mean, they're the ones that are going to dictate, you know, what the hell I do, where the hell I go with this. Oh, kind of God. Stuff. Yeah, right. But, you <laughs> yeah. Know, who was yeah. that awful girl Mark had on? Oh Lord. <laughs> no, yeah. that'd be great. Um, I, it helps me to kind of, um, get it out, you know, cause usually I, I see you, I see Troy, I see all my people I like to talk to pretty regularly, at least a couple of times a year that I get to like kind of hash out some real quick ideas, mm -hmm. but this is great. Just going back and forth and uh, well, just talking out loud about your ideas and right. your feelings. Just, it, it, it's so it's free. Uh, foreign. You know? Yeah. And yeah, yeah. It's just, foreign it's just and like, freeing at the same time. Yeah. But yeah. is there anything else you want to say? Anything you need to, uh, you know, uh, get out there, you know, before we end this here or uh, oh. get back to our day or. Uh, I'm not sure. Shout really, outs think... to mom and dad. Cause they sound like amazing people. Hey, <laughs> hey mom and dad. Hey, Shelly. Hey, Mary. Hey, Nick. <laughs> uh, hey, yeah, that's my whole family. Uh, my sister's sick right now with the COVID, so I love you. Don't die. Oh, no, uh, we just recently went through that. My, 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 uh, nobody really knows, but she's, she's better now. But, uh, uh, uh my daughter did just get over COVID oh. too. She didn't get severe symptoms, but she was pretty mm -hmm. sick and, and yeah. uh, we're, we're thankful to say she's, she's doing better. And, uh, and on top of that, she's going to be on a plane, which I'm not happy about, but she's going to be coming home for the holidays at the end of the week. So yeah. I'm excited. I'm going to, oh, I'm just, cool. I'm going to try and keep her here. I think. <laughs> that's good. Yeah. Keep her, keep her screw it. Uh, yeah, everyone just be really safe. You know, um, I, there's a lot of, you know, 
politics and things aside, you know, we just need to be safe because it's the holiday season. It's cold. It's wintry. And w- me and Mark here have studied so much bloodborne pathogens. We can tell you people are disgusting without COVID. So uh, be safe, uh, stay healthy, take your vitamins. Uh, and it's kind yeah, of terrifying uh, that people took till 2020 to learn to wash the damn hands. So, you know, <laughs> I know. <laughs> um, yeah, that's a whole other topic, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's do this again and we'll have a whole, I have, I can always come up with lots and lots of topics I can ramble on and on about, but we can ramble on. We yeah. don't really care if anybody listens anyway. So, you know, it's just, it's, it's just you and me. It's us. Oh, oh it's good so. to see you, Mark. <laughs> I, I have to say that I've been listening to about 30 hours of tattoo talk uh, a week for months, and this was awesome and very interesting. Um, do you oh, want to uh, look at the camera, let everybody know exactly how to find you and all your contact info? Okay, me, yeah. Uh, hello, my name is Renee Little. You can find me on Instagram under Renee Little Tattoos or Facebook under Renee Little Tattoos or under my website, goldfanggallery.com. And uh, yeah, give me a follow. And if you'd like to tattoo request me, hit me up. Okay. Awesome. Mark, you want to do the same thing? Uh, Yeah, I'm me. You know where to find me. Look for it. Was that good? (laughs) (laughs) No. uh, (laughs) If if you guys enjoy what we're doing here and uh, whatnot, just, you know, take a minute to follow us at YouTube, Needle Jig Tattoo Supply. Uh, take a minute to like, share, subscribe, you know, uh, do all that fun stuff everybody else asks for. Uh, I, I don't like asking for these things because it kind of sounds desperate, but um, it's one sure way for me to know you like what you're seeing and it helps motivate me to do a little bit more maybe go a little farther next time bring in some more people uh you know you tell me what you want to talk about you know stick it in the comments uh and and and, you know you are the viewers are the ones that are going to drive this channel and uh and tell me where you want me to go and uh Mm -hmm. i'll do what i can to uh 